Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Welcome to the Hulu Theater at Madison Square Garden for this very special introductory press conference. First, we'd like to welcome some special guests in attendance. Uh, John's former teammate, good friend, Hockey Hall of Famer, Rod Bear, 1994 Stanley Cup champions and Ranger legends. Both are currently members of the Rangers hockey department, Adam Graves and Brian Leach. New York Knicks president, Steve Mills. And while we're welcoming John home today, we're also welcoming home the Davidson family. His daughter Lindsay is here with us today. Ashley is home caring for the newest member of the Davidson family, nine-week-old Wesley. And lastly, a very special welcome home to John's wife, Diana. Diana was instrumental in establishing many charitable endeavors while John was with the Rangers, when John was a player, and continued to play an active role in the community during his broadcast career with MSG. It's great to have you back, Diana. Joining us on the dais today, Senior Advisor to the Owner and Alternate Governor, Glenn Sather, General Manager, Jeff Gorton, Head Coach, David Quinn, and the 11th President in Franchise History, John Davidson. And now to begin, the Executive Chairman and CEO of the Madison Square Garden Company, James Dolan. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Nice to see you all. <laughs> Um, I am excited to be here to welcome one of the premier executives in the National Hockey League, John Davidson, back to the Rangers family. <laughs> JD has returned home. His knowledge of the game, experience, and passion for the Rangers made him the ideal choice to lead the team. But I do want to digress and just <clears throat> talk about Glenn Sather for a minute. The uh, first off, Thank you, Glenn, for all that he has done for the organization and the franchise over the past 19 years. He is one of the most successful executives in Ranger franchise history. <clears throat> now, for me, he's been pretty much uh, the perfect executive. He leaves me with very little to do when it comes to the New York Rangers. Um, I end up being the guy who signs the check and cheers the team. And that's just the way I like it, by the way. <laughs> now, John brings uh, a discipline of both being a player and a hockey executive, uh, and he's been very successful in both. But we also get the added benefit of being a damn good on-air guy. <laughs> the, uh, it's been a while since you've done that, right? The, um, the, um, we are very pleased to bring him back into the fold and, to, uh, and back to the Ranger family uh, as uh, the president of the New York Rangers. Thank you very much, and congratulations, John. And now before we hear from JD, we ask to please direct your attention to the video monitors for a very special video presentation. In 1975, John Davidson arrived in New York and began his lasting impact as a member of the New York Rangers family. And there's the goaltender for the New York Rangers, big John Davidson. As a goaltender for the Blue Shirts, John was revered for his tenacious battle through injuries and fierce competitiveness. Davidson, a skate save to Rob LaFleur. And you won't see one better than that. He will always be remembered for his brilliant play in goal during the Blue Shirts' magical playoff run to the Stanley Cup Finals in 1979. Following his playing career, John joined MSG Network, where he became one of the top broadcast analysts in hockey. Oh, baby! Oh, baby, baby! John was beloved by Ranger fans and celebrated by the Hockey Hall of Fame in 2009, when he won the Foster Hewitt Award for outstanding contributions as a hockey broadcaster. No more curses. John left the broadcast booth in 2006 to begin his management career as president of hockey operations for the St. Louis Blues, before assuming the same role in Columbus in 2012. 
For the last 12 years, John has established himself as one of the most highly respected executives in the National Hockey League. Affectionately known as JD, John has always held a special place in Rangers history. The emotional ride of not only this series, the playoffs, and to have it come home like this is just so, so sweet. Today, he returns home as president to lead the future of the franchise. Boy, you sure miss New York in a lot of different ways. We are here for three decades. We became New York people, and that's a special place to be able to talk about that you became a part of. Welcome home, J.D. Thank you very much. That's the great voice of Al Trotwig. Thank you, Al. Dreams do come true. It's an emotional time for sure, and it's a great time for myself and my family. I want to thank Jim Dolan for this incredible opportunity to come home and lead the New York Rangers. I really want to thank Glenn Sather. He's a friend, a former teammate many years ago in St. Louis. And I look forward to leaning on Glenn and especially the experience that he's been able to build up during his career, a Hall of Fame career in the National Hockey League. Thanks, Glenn. It's no secret that New York has always been a, held a very special place in my heart. This is the only organization I would ever have left Columbus for. I would like to thank John P. McConnell, Mike Priest, and the entire Columbus Blue Jackets organization. Columbus is a great city. The Blue Jackets are a very proud club, and I wish them all the best. They're in very good hands. Also, I'd like to thank the St. Louis Blues. When I left the network here many years ago, I went to St. Louis, and we got into a build to try to build a hockey club. The city of St. Louis and the Blues organization were very good to us. I'd like to wish them all the best, and it looks like it will be a great series with the Blues and the Boston Bruins, two terrific hockey clubs for the Stanley Cup final. After meeting with Jim last, I think it was last week, it was very clear that we, say, that we share the same vision. I want to uh, continue what's been started here, and that's to build the Rangers to become perennial Stanley Cup contenders. They're doing it the right way. Jim is a man who wants to win, he wants to do it right, and we're on the same page. General Manager Jeff Gordon, and his staff have worked very hard over the last two years to build the foundation that's in place. It puts us in a great position to be aggressive as we continue to improve. Being in the same division as the Rangers over the last six and a half years, yes, I watched a lot of Ranger games. My good friend Sam, of course Joe and Al and the whole crew it, what became very noticeable in watching those games is what's already been established. And that's the identity that New Yorkers love. It's a team that works, a team that plays hard, and a team that plays the game the right way. And I credit Coach David Quinn and his staff for doing exactly that. And we're going to continue to improve in that area. That is very, very important. I can't tell you how important it is to have the proper culture in an organization to try to win hockey games, and they've certainly done a terrific job in creating that already. Thanks to my family, my wife, of course, as, as John mentioned, is here. My daughter is here. My other daughter couldn't make it. Very sad for her, but she knows uh, that she'll get her chance to visit us in New York in the very near future. There's a lot of work to do here. There's no shortcuts. It's nothing but hard work, and it takes patience and resolve. And I really want to make sure that I use the word patience and I use the word resolve because we're going to be in a battle here to get this club to be better. But you have to be patient when you go through a build like this. It's just what it is. I've had the great opportunity to do it twice, once in St. Louis, once in Columbus. We have a great staff here. We've got already many young pieces in place. 
We're going to get them. They're going to be stars in the National Hockey League, and the Rangers are going to be better for it. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming out today. And yes, for me, dreams come true. Okay, we'll now take questions. Uh, just please raise your hand. Um, there's going to be wireless microphones coming through. Go ahead. Hey, John, welcome back. Congratulations. Uh, last year, I got an opportunity to speak to you at length via a book on the 78 79 Rangers, and you had this to say about playing in New York. It's complicated. To try and win in New York, it's just different here. But at the same time, it's a wonderful thing. If you ever get a chance to pass that test, I would recommend that to all players. If you have a chance to play in New York, play in New York, at least for a while, because if you can pass that test, you can pass any test. It's a demanding way of playing the game from everyone involved, but it's fantastic. It toughens you up. It makes you learn how to win. It makes you learn how to deal with losses. It makes you learn how to deal with your own emotions when things go well and when they don't go well. So for someone who's passed that test as a player, taking the team to a Stanley Cup final, a, a person who passed that test as a broadcaster and ended up in the Hall of Fame, is that, that thrill, that demand, is that what drove you to this position? When Absolutely. You the, um, when you get into a situation where you know what the goal is and you have a plan in place, and the Rangers certainly do have a plan in place, that's what you live for. And, and when you talk to... Jim, that's what he wants. He wants to stay with a plan. He got all, has all the resources to try to help us do what, need, what we need to do to try to become a, a, a championship hockey club. New York's special. There's only one New York. And uh, I can remember when I got here as a player, it was hard at first because I didn't know. I, I grew up in Calgary, Alberta. I played two years in St. Louis and got traded. But once once you figure it out and it gets in your blood, it's there forever. It's a special place to win, and that's what we, we plan on doing. Mike Oberner? It's, uh, you sort of touched on it here, and um, you mentioned in a statement uh, how this was the only opportunity that, that you would take to make this kind of a move in your life and your career. We all understand the, the roots you have here and can fill in some of the blanks, but I'd like to ask you in your own words, what makes this place special for you? What makes this opportunity the job? New York Rangers, an original six team. I saw what it was like in 1979 as a player when we got to the finals, did not win. I saw what it was like in 1994 when, when uh, Mark and uh, people like we see here with Brian and Adam, what it took and what this city did when this team won the championship. That was a very special time in my life. I've uh, lived here at, previously for 28 years, raised two daughters here, had a, had a wonderful life, became what, not a born New Yorker, but I think I became a New Yorker. It's always been in my blood. And uh, because of all those reasons, you start you get your ledger sheet out and you have an opportunity and you go tick, 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 check, 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 check. It all checks in, on one side of the ledger sheet. This is a very special opportunity for me and my family to get back to a place that we kind of, we were walking the streets last night and my wife said, Geez, doesn't this just feel like we didn't leave? I said, yeah, it feels like we didn't leave. You're absolutely right. It's a special place. Steven? This question's for you, Jeff. Uh, You've had, and, and John has mentioned kind of patience and resolve with this, and you've preached that in terms of this kind of rebuild and youth movement, but what does it do for you and the whole hockey operations department to have John here after what he did, was able to do in St. Louis and Columbus? Yeah, I think it's going to be a huge benefit having, uh, he's gone through it in two organizations. Um, you know, he's done everything in hockey, his experiences, um, just his even keel way about him. Um, it's, it's going to be a great asset for us as we go through this process. There's no question about that. Dan Rose. Uh, J.D., over here. How, how much different is this job for you than what it was when you arrived in St. Louis and then what it was when you arrived Ooh. in Columbus? Well, when I went to St. Louis, I was pretty green. I, uh, I wasn't quite sure what I was getting myself into, but I knew I needed a change. I, I had worked here so long and, and been involved with the network, which was as good as it gets. It was as good as it gets. Madison Square Garden Network was 
fantastic to me. And um, I had an opportunity to go to St. Louis and, and try to take a different step. So talked to the family and we jumped in. It became uh, a labor of love, what we had to do to try to reestablish a franchise, find ways to make deals to get picks. Heck, I remember we traded uh, Keith Kachuk for a first rounder. He'd come back and sign with us the next year. We'd trade him again, get another first rounder. We were, we were trying anything we could to try to build a franchise. And um, the, the Blues at that time were, there was, it, was, it was in rough shape because they didn't know whether they were going to keep the Blues in St. Louis or not. And I feel with our group that we were able to reestablish there. It's hard, it took patience. But uh, I, I also uh, I pull for them to do well now because a good number of those players are ones that we were part of drafting. Larry Plo was there, who was the assistant general manager here, by the way, with the Rangers in 94. And uh, you work, you work. You get young people in, you develop them, you try to get them to be as, as good a, a National Hockey League player as quickly as possible. So I learned a lot there. I moved over to Columbus. It was a little bit different because they were already in, in better shape than when we went to St. Louis. But it's still hockey. It's still a rink. It's still a puck. You're still trying to win. You're still trying to do a magnificent job drafting. I'm very happy with what we've been able to do in that respect. And then you have to develop players. And you have to go through a process. Everybody's different. Everybody's, everybody's got a different mentality, mindset, culture, where they come from, etc. So I think with that experience in coming here, and this team's already had some, some, some terrific picks and, and things along those lines. And also, I think I look here and I look at what Glenn and the group are doing now with the training center. It's world class. It was world class, and so now they're redoing a lot of the stuff to make it even better. Um, Jim said to me, he said, basically, whatever you need, you're going to get. Try to do it. And go get it type of thing. And I, I just was so happy to hear that because that's the attitude you need to have when, you, when you're trying to uh, build a championship team here in New York. Bruce? J.D., welcome back. Thanks, Bruce. How do you balance a fast rebuild with trying to obtain sustained success? Jeez, you never change, Bruce. Good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, just by doing it right. Listen, this is not a perfect business. There's always some mistakes to be made, but you do your research, you do your homework, you get together with your group, and you try to make as many proper decisions as possible, whether it's through the draft or through the trade. You try to develop, you, you try to get players, young ones here in the, in the off season to learn how to train, to give them a better chance because they're getting stronger physically. Uh, you, 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 you get them to understand how to, how to play hockey in New York in the National Hockey League. If you do it right, you can, you can do it for a long period of time. It sets your foundation. A lot of the foundation here is being built already. Um, it, it's important to stay with your plan. It's important to stay with your plan. And you build the foundation, and you keep getting better and better and better. You do a great job with every aspect of scouting and training that you can possibly do. It's, there's no real secrets to it. There's no magic bullet. This, the, the, you can't reach in a blender and pull out a real good hockey team. You've got to build it. You've got to work it. You have to be, um, you have to be steel with your resolve to do it the right way. Alan? John, welcome back. Hi, thanks. How are you? Uh, 40 years ago, the magical run of 79 was culminating this month, uh, beating the Islanders here playing the Canadians in the finals, all, the, all that went with that. Is there a special significance to the arc of your career that here you are uh, well, 40 years later, same month? It's been quite a, quite a circle. I never really looked at it that way, but thank you for that. Uh, many great memories, and being back in New York, I'll be able to uh, hook up with a lot of those players. Uh, we, we had a great group. The, the thing that I remember mostly about that was how New York reacted to our hockey club. This, this was an amazing time for me. We went into the playoffs. I had had a shoulder uh, injury. Didn't know whether I'd be ready or not. <laughs> True story, the first uh, game was at home to Los Angeles. Charlie Simmer, a great player, came down, went around me, had an open net. Uh, this is the first minute of the game. and hit the goalpost. If it goes in, I don't know what would have happened. Uh, but I oh boy, maybe Lady Luck's there. And sure enough, we got on a roll with a bunch of 
young players. They were really good players. Some experience with Carol Vadney and Phil Esposito and others. And uh, that run was significant because of the feeling of what New York gave back to us. I used to wake up in the morning up in Westchester and there'd be gifts on our doorstep. People I didn't even know. They were just so happy that our team was, was on a run and having fun. The Islanders series was a great series. Of course, they had a great team, went on to win the next four Stanley Cups. But uh, a wonderful experience, great memories, and thank you. Any other questions before we break for a photo? One more. John, welcome back. Thank you. Uh, it, you had a lot of experience in St. Louis and Columbus helping turn those teams around. <clears throat> what part of those experiences do you feel will best benefit you here in New York if you attempt to do the same? Working with people. I want our staff to be a staff that's going to be together. Um, I want everybody to have individual opinions but be on our team. Uh, I want hard work. I want to have our guys, uh, this is what they do, they scour the world to try to find the proper talent to, uh, to help us become a better hockey club quicker. The, the National Hockey League's gotten younger. That's one thing it really has, has done. And uh, with that being said, that should make, um, with timing of things, not the seven, eight, nine year run it used to take in this league. It, it can be done uh, because of the, of the youth that plays in this league now. <laughs> Players are trained. They play international hockey at young ages. They they uh, they compete and understand and have great coaching. They have great nutrition. Much more prepared than they used to be. We just got to get the right ones and get them here, and uh, and certainly work on getting them ready to uh, to be great Rangers. Okay. Thanks, everybody.